Hello musicians, this is Corey Taylor from skillmusician.com where we are helping musicians improve. Thank y'all so much for checking out this video. Now in this video, we are continuing on our hymn collaboration with Christine from Canada Music Lessons. And in this session, we are focusing on arpeggios, runs, and riffs. Now this is part five of the series. So in case you haven't seen the rest of it, there'll be a little card that pops up up here definitely check out the rest of the series so you get context and can keep up with us. But let's not waste any more time. Let's get started. I noticed on some of your right hands, and I know you're trying not to be too fancy today. Right. You talked about doing a beginner video, but I, you can't help it. You're adding in these beautiful little licks and runs. Um, is there a, a way that they could... Um, maybe find a simple one to get started if they want. Is there one that repeats itself a lot or sure. uh, fingering maybe you could show us today? Sure, sure, sure. So um, I think I did at one time, I think I did something like uh, uh, flip. I think I did something like that. And so that's simply, um, and that works over a couple chords. Yeah. So what I'm simply doing is I'm playing three notes and then repeating. Uh, actually, four notes and then repeating. So we're going G, C, D, G. Then I repeat. So. That's what's happening. Just do, doing it faster. And I'm holding the sustain pedal. The sustain pedal is key. Right, and that this particular chord or, or sound works over almost every chord in the key. So you can use it almost. Yeah, it works over just about every one, you know, over C, D minor, D, F, G, A minor, D diminished. Probably just work over this one. <laughs> All right, so that's one simple one. And the finger I'm using, I'm doing one, two, three, five. And then I'm bringing my thumb, one, two, three. So my thumb is one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going one, two, three, five. One, two, three, five. So the key of that, the hardest part is just making the cross from five to one. One, two, three, five, one. That, that cross is the hard part. So if you're gonna see put, most people miss, even me when I miss that run, it's because my, my hand did like, I did something like that. <laughs> and my, my thumbs. Like that. Another run I love doing um, is pentatonic. Now the pentatonic scale, penta meaning five, um, tonic means tones or notes, also five note scale. So pentatonic scale, five note scale. And so what it is is basically the major scale leaving out the fourth degree and the seventh degree. So that's a major scale, that's C major scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, back to one. So I'm gonna leave out the four. One, two, three, no four. Five, six, and then no seven. Um, and you've probably heard this sound. Um, so music historians talk about the pentatonic scale. Um, so many will say, you know, it was founded in Asia, but it was also found in Africa. Um, you, you know, you uh, that kind of sound is definitely Asian, um, but it's also in, in in African music as well. So it's it's it is global. It's it's a scale that everybody uses. Matter of fact, the song "Amazing Grace" 
It's just the notes of the pentatonic scale. Mm, wow. Sorry. It's just notes of the pentatonic scale. So anyway, um, how do you finger that? Um, let's see. All right, so there are, there are a number of fingering for pentatonic. The, pentatonic. the pentatonic scale is weird to play. Um, and so there are fingering that uh, change over two octaves. So, oh, okay. so normally we're used to doing a finger for one octave and then we repeat. Um, but there are a number of fingers that, that last over two octaves. But I'm going to teach you the one that's go over one octave. So we're going to go one, two, three, one, two. And then repeat. One, two, three, one, two, one, two. All right, there are many other fingerings that you'll find. If you look in some, some method books and, and scale books, they'll, they'll have some weird finger that's like one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, four. That's... It's weird, and they don't, they're not even, like one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two. So they're, they're different. All right. It's a really neat scale. Um, would you be able to show us how we could use, like, that? maybe that pentatonic one? Could we use that in a hymn? Well, yes. So, like, where, where would we put it? Um, <laughs> okay. There are a million ways you can use it. So let me, sh let me, <laughs> let me, let me uh, give you a few. All right, so. Uh, 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 I need the area. So you can use it as an embellishment on the melody. So. I just started on the fifth one, two, three, five, six, one. could have done it there. Oh. Um. Right. That's kind of like a classic kind of uh, gospel. Starting on the third, three, two, one, six, five. You going quick. Right, so you can use it as an embellishing, embellishment technique on the melody. So I'm just ornamenting, embellishing the melody itself. Right, um, so I'm trying to get it. Well, that was I just did two notes of the pentatonic scale at the same time. So the, I did one two one two one and five six five six five. So one hand up. So I'm doing one and three and two and four. Right. So. I can use it to, to harmonize uh, a melody. Uh, and I'm just using the pentatonic scale. You can use it as like um something that you can use to fill in space. Um, uh, let's see. So a lot of your folksy, kind of backwoodsy, I, I say backwoodsy in like a like an earthy kind of music 
country, R&B, gospel, all use the pentatonic scale to make it feel more homey. Like it feels... All that stuff like that is just using the pentatonic scale and just playing several notes of it at the same time. So this is all the notes, one, three, four, five. But I just, let's see, let's do Right. So, I'm just playing the pentatonic scale, but I'm doing two notes at the same time. Right. So, um, so let's, let's see if I can get it in here. This is a weird song to do it on because it's so like so flowy, especially when you play the time. <laughs> uh, there's there's not many spots where I can get it in the way I want to. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, we get an idea of how you're using it to kind of fill in empty space, like right. when the singer's not singing, and oh, that's awesome. Or maybe so at the I very end, just do it at the very end. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. I'm just doing. So, or or you can just do it how, how I mentioned earlier, just you no, know, just kind of just playing it as a as like a soundscape, just kind of like a shh, that's the thing. And when you do that though, it's important. Just side note, you notice I always end on like I, I'm, I'm I'm always. I'm always trying to end on a chord tone. So say for instance, I'm playing C major. See, I'm playing C major here in my left hand. C, G, E. So I'm going to try to end on one of those notes, C, E, or G. Okay. It sounds weird if I end this run and I don't end on C, E, or G. Watch. Or... Well, it'll work, but... Uh feels better all right so you made it through level five so i want to hear what you can do with this information there's a lot here and i want to see when you combine it with the other four videos how it all works out so send this send me a copy tag me uh in the uh on youtube or facebook or instagram of you playing this hymn so there's something i haven't really talked about but i've put it in the description box and, and all my videos it's a free 15 minute video call with me so that I can see how I can help you reach your goals musically. So if you are looking for some help, some guidance on how to reach your goals musically, uh, definitely click that link and set up a free video call with me. Also make sure you hit the subscribe button and as well hit the like button and comment below your suggestions of topics you'd like to see me make because I want to make the videos you want to see. All right y'all. Well, until the next one, be blessed and happy practice.